an entitled Karen demands my Spider-Man toy for her child, stating that he needs it so much more than I do, and even going as far as showing up at our house at 2 in the morning, demanding that we hand it over. But my mom sets this lady straight and tells her to get lost. Here's what happened. So this would be a very complicated story if I had to explain all the idiosyncrasies of my family, but I will try to cut things short and simplify it as much as possible. So there's this cousin of mine, and he's an only child of a mom who had him when she thought she couldn't be a mom anymore. So in having that child, she spoiled that boy like crazy. He could always manipulate his mother into doing whatever he wanted, simply by pretending to be sick and saying something along the lines of, I think I'm gonna be sick. Here are just some of the examples off the top of my head of him being spoiled. For starters, whenever he didn't want to eat, his mother would put his food in the blender and give it to him so he didn't have to chew it. Yeah, absolutely disgusting if you ask me. Also, his mother would cut up his food, like a piece of meat or a sausage or something like this, and has done that all the way up until present day. And at this time, he's still 28 years old. And I'm not talking in the sense of like, she is cutting the food for him to show affection here or there. I'm talking in the middle of a barbecue or around a bunch of grown people playing football. Or even when he's drinking and eating, he would fix himself a plate, go to his mother, and ask him to cut up the meat for him. This was literally the last interaction I had with him. And we tried talking to him since he was like 15 or so, but that in and of itself was just incredibly weird. Anyway, so in the past when he was about 7 or 8 years old, the Spider-Man trilogy with Tobey Maguire was the hot stuff on the town. And my grandfather had a client of his that was the owner of a company that made toys. So he would give me and my brother the catalogs with the toys of the season when he visited us. At the time, we lived in a small town, and he lived in a big city, about 2 to 4 hours away, depending on the traffic. So he and my grandmother would visit us frequently. He requested that we choose a few toys for our birthdays, as well as something for Christmas, as well as Easter. So being the superhero fan that I always was, I asked him for the Green Goblin and the Spider-Man action figures. And boy, oh boy, they were the two best toys I've ever gotten to this day. They were simply magical. I slept with him by my side, and happily so. And it was even during the time when I was slowly overcoming my fear of sleeping alone. So in the next interaction that my brother and I had with my cousin, we brought the toy out, which was as detailed and realistic as possible. It was works of art, and I honestly loved it. But you know what? So did my cousin, specifically the Spider-Man, which was both of our favorite superheroes. And he played with it all day long, which was no problem for me, as long as I could get it back and have it with me when I sleep. Well, fast forward to two in the morning, and according to my mom, my mother receives a call from my cousin's mother. And again, according to my mom, you would think that this kid was on the verge of collapsing and that the only antidote was the Spider-Man action figure, especially by the tone of her voice and the things that she said. She asked if she could come by, go to my room, and get the toy. And of course, that would wake me up as well as my brother up in the process. But this entitled mother definitely did not care. She also asked if my mother could do her a favor and just deliver it to her house. Now, according to my cousin's mom, he was apparently sweating and he has a high fever and that all he can say is that he wants the Spider-Man toy. And he was saying this as dramatic as possible, as if he was about to meet God himself in a few minutes unless he got it. Well, my my mother was not having it. She promptly and very angrily told her that I was asleep and I had to wake up at 7 in the morning and that it was not only dangerous to go out at night to do some stupid stuff like this, but driving while sleepy was also very, very dangerous. And after that, my mom said goodnight and hung up the phone. Now you might think this is the end of it, but not even 20 minutes later, my cousin's mother is at the front gate of our house honking the horn, demanding once again that we hand over the Spider-Man toy. But my mom simply was not having it. She stated that she would not give her the toy and that her kid would just have to deal with it and learn to take no for an answer. And to this day, even though several years have passed since that incident, this entitled mother still hates my mom as well as me to this day. How weird can you possibly get? I mean, this lady seriously drove at two in the morning to try and steal this original poster's toy all because their spoiled child was pretending to be sick just so they could have this toy for themselves. I mean, how obnoxious obnoxious can you get? And clearly this kid is just playing his mom. He has got her wrapped around his finger so easily this kid can absolutely get whatever he wants. And that is so bad for a kid growing up. And I mean the proof is right there. This guy is now 28 years old and his mom still cuts up his food for him. Like this guy needs a wake up call big time. So good for the original poster's mother for laying down the law and saying no, your kid can 
and have this. Because caving to that demand would have been absolutely tragic. Because there's honestly no good excuse for showing up at that time demanding something that is honestly so frivolous. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. This next one came from the Am I the Jerk podcast subreddit. Check the links in the description if you'd like to submit your own story. Am I the Jerk for helping some nurses put an entitled Karen in her place? So today, my six-year-old son unfortunately hurt his hand, probably a broken finger, but we will see what the x-rays say. My wife collected him from his school holiday program and took him to the emergency room with our infant daughter in tow. She rang me at work to let me know what was going on. The wait in the emergency room was expected to be a few hours, so I told my wife I'd swing by home after work and collect some snacks with our son's iPad to keep him entertained. I'd also take our daughter back home, so I locked up work, picked up the iPad and some snacks, and went to the medical center. By this time, my wife and kids had been there a couple of hours. I checked the waiting room and they had been called back already, so I went to the main desk to find my way to them. Behind the counter were two nurses, and the younger one was in tears. The other one was consoling her, so apparently I had just missed quite the show. They had just put an entitled Karen into a vacant doctor's room. She had been making a scene in the waiting room, hurling all sorts of horrible statements around, complaining about the waiting time. The younger nurse had tried to explain that they are a trauma center, and patients were seen in the order of their severity, not necessarily in the order in which they arrive. But this entitled Karen was having none of it, and berated the junior nurse to the point where she was crying. The entitled Karen may have thought that she'd won at this point, getting into an examination room, but all she had really achieved was sitting on her own while she waited. The nurse saw me at the desk. I gave my son's name to her and explained that I'm just here to drop off some things and get the baby. The nurse said she's in room 5 and she'll take me down there. And that's when the older nurse stepped in and told the junior nurse to take me past room 2, where the entitled Karen was simmering away in her fury. She then asked me a favor. Can you pretend you're a patient for us? We just need you to walk past this room. So I decided, okay, and I agreed. I work in retail and I understand the desire to troll a Karen. The nurse smiled and I followed her down the corridor. The nurse motioned to me as we approached room 2. I put on a limp and hobbled past the open door. Inside was the Karen, dressed to the nines, scrolling through her phone and impatiently tapping her foot on the floor. We locked eyes and I struggled to hide a smirk. Once we had just passed out of Karen's sight, I said to the nurse, thank you for getting me in so quickly. I thought I'd be waiting all night with this sprained ankle and it was loud and clear with all the fake grimaces I could muster. The nurse couldn't hide her glee. No trouble, she replied through a massive grin. The doctor will see you right away. The reaction was immediate. An almighty scream of frustration erupts from room two. Then the phone flies out the door, clattering against the wall on the opposite side of the corridor. The nurse and I kept going down the corridor to where my wife and children were waiting. I checked in on everyone, dropped off the snacks, and grabbed our daughter to take her home. I then walked back down the corridor past room two again. The Karen was still there, now on her feet, and pacing around the room. I caught her eye again and acknowledged her with a nod as I strode past, my limp mysteriously gone. I saw the fire ignite in her eyes again as I went past, and her rage continued as I went back out through the waiting area, waving to the two nurses as my daughter and I left the building. I am glad I was able to help out the nurses in dealing with this Karen. Nobody deserves to be berated in their workplace like that. In hindsight though, despite her attitude, the entitled Karen may have had some legitimate reason for being there at the doctor's, and I could have been trolling someone genuinely needing help. So it begs the question, am I the jerk for doing what I did for the nurses? I don't think you're the jerk at all. The way she was acting was incredibly inappropriate, and there's no reason to freak out like that and to act like such a jerk. So in my opinion, I don't think you're the jerk. But what do you think? Would you have gone along with what the nurse requested, or would you have just wanted to get to the room with your family? Let us know down below. Today, I messed up by making fun of a guy who doesn't know how to do his own laundry, and as a result, he is incredibly offended. Here's what happened. So I started seeing this guy about three weeks ago. Now let me be clear, we have known each other for a long time because he was a friend of my cousin. He asked me out a few weeks ago and I said yes. I have known him since I was like 15. I also know his family too because our moms were colleagues. So anyway, he came to my house five days ago to pick me up because we were having a picnic date. I was in the living room watching the kids show Phineas and Ferb. I really like this show. I have been watching the reruns ever since I was a kid. This cartoon had a huge impact on my 
my life. I still watch it whenever my mood is off so that I can still cling on to the innocent child inside me. I was laughing at some part of the show and he was standing next to me and it looked like he was a little confused based on his expression. He asked me if my nephew was in the house and I told him no. He then asked me who it is that's watching this cartoon since all of my family members are adults. So I told him that I'm watching it and I really like this cartoon. I then proceed to tell him that I still watch this particular cartoon because it was a part of my childhood and I have some good memories linked to it. He told me it is really embarrassing and ridiculous and when he said this I asked him why and that's when he told me something that really offended me. He told me that I'm a 24 year old woman. Why am I watching something for kids? He also then said that I need to grow up and when he said this this really bothered me because I don't think there's an age limit to watching cartoons. Since that day, he would constantly make fun of me. Whenever we go to a restaurant, he would jokingly order from the kids menu. He would talk to me in a baby voice as if I was a kid. And whenever I would tell him to stop, he would say, oh, are you going to get mad? That's cute. And sometimes even use phrases like young lady. It was really frustrating. Today, we went to a party and his friends were there too. I was meeting them for the first time. He introduced me. He then tells them how I still watch cartoons cartoons and they all laughed. He also made fun of my height too. For context, I'm 5'4 and he is 6'1. He then proceeds to shuffle my hair like most people do on kids and I got mad. I then told him, it's funny how he makes fun of me being a kid, yet he still needs his mommy to do his laundry. And when I said that, his smile just wiped off of his face. I further said, well at least this kid knows how to clean up after herself and knows how to drive, unlike him, who failed the driving test two times. And after I said that, the room went completely silent. Later when I got home, I got calls from my cousin that I overreacted and that I embarrassed him in front of his friends, while also claiming that he was right to make fun of me because who watches cartoons when they are adults? I told her I am not interested in entertaining boys who feel like they can make fun of anyone they want, but when someone does the exact same thing to them, they act like little babies. And that was probably the shortest relationship I have ever had in my life. That guy, the original post was dating is absolutely toxic. I mean, seriously, you're dating a woman that you're just now getting to know, and you're seriously going to start making fun of her even after she said, hey, could you cut it out? And it would be one thing to do it in private where it's just little jabs at each other that maybe you need to reel in because it's offending her or something like that. But he decided, you know what? I'm going to embarrass her in front of all my friends. Like, that's not a good characteristic to have. And it doesn't make you a good person. Instead, this guy turned into a giant bully. And just like most bullies, they cannot take what they're dishing out. So in my opinion, it was fantastic to hear that the original poster gave this guy a taste of his own medicine. Probably doesn't feel very good, now does it? So I think you dodged a massive nightmare because if there's anyone in this situation who is clearly not grown up, I would be more than willing to put my money on this guy just with how sensitive he is and how easily offended he became. My boss gave me criticism, claiming that I was making others uncomfortable while also never providing me with any example so that I can try to adjust my behavior. So in protest, I decided to stop talking. And because of my lack of participation, the entire office went into a tailspin, causing massive damages that I easily could have fixed. Here's what happened. So about 10 years ago, I worked in a team of scientists. When one day, our boss told me others perceive me as contemptuous. I was shocked beyond words. I certainly did not feel superior or feel contempt for anyone. I was so flabbergasted. I was silent for probably two solid minutes. I asked for an example of when something I had said or done gave someone that feeling. He said he couldn't divulge that information. Okay. Then I asked for an example that he experienced or observed himself. He said that he had none. So I said to him, since I have no clue what I've done, how am I supposed to adjust my behavior? And he said he didn't know. So I said, basically then, I just need to not talk. And he said he wasn't sure. I knew right then and there what to do. I am pretty introverted and as a child, I didn't talk for years. I rarely spoke up until I was about 13 years old. I got lots of notes from teachers about how quiet I was. I would answer questions when directly asked, but rarely spoke up otherwise. So my malicious compliance in this situation was easy for me. I just stopped talking, except when asked a question. I made a point of smiling, showing that I was listening, as well as nodding in agreement or anything else with a conversation. I was extremely polite and agreeable. Pretty soon, some big issues came up that I had specific knowledge about. I knew how to solve them, but no one else asked me. A huge 
conflict came up between two of our labs because one group wanted it one way and the other group had a different opinion. They fought and fought. People were having secret meetings in their offices to try and win this situation. And when they finally arrived at the action they chose, it was wrong. In fact, both groups were wrong and the whole experiment failed. It is important to know that no one was hurt, no property damage or anything like that. Just a lot of wasted time and expense on materials. But I never said a word and this went on for three weeks. The lab's budget had to be revised. They had to cut travel expenses, which I was okay with because I didn't want to travel anyways. So no conferences for anyone. Now, this is a big deal for a lot of researchers because it's how we gain notoriety to be able to get grants, among other things. Finally, a colleague asked me why I hadn't spoken for so long. Why was I so quiet? Was something wrong? I then explained about being told others perceive me as contemptuous. She had the same expression I did when I was told this. She said she didn't believe anyone had said that about me. I honestly was surprised again because I believed our boss. Then she asked me what I thought about the experiment design and why it was failing. I told her about the solution that I believe would work, which was actually surprisingly simple. She recognized it had a good chance of succeeding and asked me to share the idea at the next department meeting. At that meeting, she asked me again in front of everyone and I repeated what I told her. Several people asked why I hadn't spoken up sooner. I explained that I had been given feedback that indicated I caused others to feel uncomfortable. The whole table of colleagues also looked stunned at me. I said I was committed to not causing such bad feelings and I couldn't figure out how to communicate because the feedback didn't give me any specific guidance. Everyone looked at the director at that point and he said we shouldn't discuss personal issues. But it was my issue. So I said if anyone here perceives me as contemptuous and said as much to our boss, that's the reason I haven't been talking. If you don't feel that way about me, let me know and I will stop being silent. Someone else said that we needed to hold a vote so that there wouldn't be any more confusion or talking behind anyone's back. They voted 100% for me to talk normally and that they didn't agree that I was ever contemptuous. That director slowly stopped coming to work month by month after this episode until he was only showing up one day a week. Finally, he took a lab position elsewhere and one of my colleagues was promoted to director and the experiment was a success. The next year, I got a grant to keep the research going and paid for two people to be able to travel to the related conference to present our findings. So overall, things kind of worked out in the end. That boss is an absolute piece of garbage. The fact that they would not only make up this kind of criticism, but then also not give you any examples to try and help you adjust your behavior is incredibly toxic. They quite literally caused so much damage to this lab by basically lying to this person or at least projecting their own feelings onto this person and pointlessly causing conflict. I mean, that is an awful director, manager, whatever you want to call them. And I am really glad that you addressed this publicly and got it out in the open because this kind of behavior is absolutely ridiculous. And if I was in the shoes of the original poster, I would have done the same thing. Oh, I'm being contemptuous? All right, fine. I just won't talk anymore. Let's see how far you guys can get because how can someone possibly change if they're never told how to change? So honestly, it's a good thing that terrible director got kicked out because they clearly did not have your best interest in mind and they honestly had no clue what they were doing. My manager constantly made fun of us and pitted us against each other as employees. So I quit my job without properly teaching him how to do my job or teach my co-workers how to fill in when he inevitably fails. Here's what happened. Three years ago, I started working in a company where my manager was an absolute piece of garbage to me that would insult us and blame any problem on his employees with the sole goal of trying to get us against each other. I got burned out after about a year, and this was after 10-hour days and weekends, where I would be performing tasks that were greatly above my paycheck, and completely different from what I was promised as I got there. So I gave my resignations. My manager thought I was useless, as he often said about anyone but himself. So instead of trying to find a new employee, he decided he would have to take over my role, much to the demise of my co-workers. The only problem was, I was the only person who knew perfectly some of the ERP programs that the company uses, and I would have had to teach him my one and a half years of experience in two weeks. As I started to teach him, he got more and more frustrated, as well as terrified by the amount of workload that was coming his way, and as a result, he started to insult me even more. But I was still trying to teach him the best I could for the sake of my co-workers. All of this until the 
first day of my last week, I was pointing out a mistake that he was making every time he did a certain task, and he replied to me by screaming at me to shut up. I don't need you to act like a teacher. So, feeling petty, I decided to enact some malicious compliance. So instead of helping him out, I just sat beside him for the next and last five days, not teaching him anything. And every time he couldn't remember how to do something, I would jokingly cheer him up, telling him I was sure he could come up with the solution himself if he just focused enough. When problems would come up that I still didn't have the time to solve, I would tell him, I don't know how this thing happened. It never happened to me. You should contact the client service. They taught me everything I know. The peak of this was when he got so frustrated that he started repeatedly slamming the mouse against the desk and then sat there staring blankly at the screen for 10 minutes. I had to actually keep myself from laughing in his face. After I left, I spent the next two months getting called almost daily by all my ex-colleagues asking for them to help me find files or to solve problems that they couldn't find an answer for and stuff that I didn't have time to teach them as I had to stay with a manager all the time. But thankfully, I don't work there anymore, so I honestly could care less how that business goes. That is honestly how it should be done in my opinion. If your manager is going to be that toxic to you and treat you like garbage on a daily basis, they can't possibly expect you to want to stick around. So truly good riddance. You do not need that kind of energy in your life and if any of your ex-co-workers are upset by the state of that office, they can look to your manager as the reason why things suck. Because if they just listened, they wouldn't be in this mess in the first place. And if they had actually treated their employees with respect, then just maybe one of the most valuable ones would have stuck around. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.